have you ever, ever, like, been in a relationship and their relationship ends and it directly affects all your future relationships? And that relationship is kind of like the foundation of your next relationship and that cycle continuously goes on and people aren't given the proper chance to be what they have designed to be in your life and a term kind of like rose to the surface that I was definitely thinking about was PTSD relationships, you know? PTSD is clearly post-traumatic and the whole post-traumatic is like relationships in for a reason. So when you're in a situation of dating and you guys are dating and it ends, you can continue with the next one but have the same mentality as the old one. And that could be really, really bad because you will catch yourself not giving the current person your all or your potential. You know, you're just giving them something and they're taking it as it is. And you're dating, caring, trying all these new things all because you're responding from your previous, you know, you didn't really clear up things of your past. You just, all right, their relationship over with. Okay. And then you start catching the cycles, you know, you can start in high school and down there be 10, 15 years out of high school, but catch yourself in those same continuous cycles of, well, these are the only type of guys I date or constantly running back to the one particular person because that's your comfort. Even though that's not who you want to be, that you know that's who you don't need to be. But that's your comfort, you know. And we tend to blame others, you know, and not focus our attention on self. Because the only person we can blame is really ourselves. Because whoever did these traumatic things to us, it was done to us. So we have to take ownership that it was done and move on. Not, hey, you did this to me and I have not recovered. That's not that's not good and healthy. That's traumatic and it's gonna keep going on until you properly address it. Now, we sit here and say, how do we address it? Simple, take ownership and move forward. And just like anything in life, if something truly hurts you, it's not going to be something you can overcome, snap of a finger. It's not something you can overcome by consuming some type of drug or some type of alcoholic beverage or even something as a communication with somebody. You know, if you're talking to your best friends about people you're dating and you are having the same conversations to the point of your person you're talking to can't distinguish who you're talking about, that's that's not good. That's not overcoming. That's not owning, you know. And I'm not saying owning is not not talking about it. Owning is more understanding your role in the situation. If you're in a relationship and it ends and you're dating somebody else and you're having those same conversations about the next person, it's really critical to really look at it and say, what is my role in these two situations? Because these are two different people. What is my role? That is really critical. And also, another thing that's really critical to really analyze is you can't feel like this is all I'm attracted to. You know what I'm saying? Attraction comes from different layers, you know? And if you're constantly dating, attracted to one particular thing, 
that's showing your limitations as a person. You know what I'm saying? We live in a world now where everything's diverse. It's no completely genuine one thing. Everything is diverse. Everything's in layers. So it's really critical to understand and really pay attention to your particular level and focus on that level and that layer as you're involving yourself with somebody because people are going to react and treat you on that level that y'all are currently working on. You know, if you are jumping from relationship to relationship and you're treating the new person like the last person, you may be on a different level than that new person is with you. You may jump into it and be like, well, he know what I like. She know what I like. So I don't have to tell them. And it's like, you still have to focus on on foundation things at all times. You could never lose your foundation. That's how we run into these post-traumatic issues with relationships. It's my expectation was here. You didn't meet these expectations. It's like, I didn't know the expectations. Well, you should know. You've been with me. And it's like, yes, I've been with you from the moment we met. Not from the moment you had issues with so-and-so. So it's really important as you're dealing with relationships, you really get the proper guidance before starting a new one. I know it's a lot of times, like, I got friends. I got tons of female friends. And I say I have female friends because it's challenging for me to have a male friend. And when I use the word female friend, I wouldn't say be like buddy, buddy, friend, friend. But, you know, I'm comfortable talking to a woman due to my upbringing. Like when I grew up, I had nothing but women around. So it, I'm really comfortable talking to a woman because, like, I kind of understand where most of y'all come from. I think I know y'all. So I, I really understand easier. So I was talking to a female friend and we'll be constantly communicating. And like, as we're communicating, they're constantly like, you know, yeah, I'm not ready for a relationship, this, this, and this. I'm like, yeah, I figured her, I figured her. And then like, all of a sudden they got a boyfriend, they serious. And I'm like, okay, you went from I don't want a man to, I'm in, I'm with a serious man. And I'm like, mm, that ain't good because you obviously is something you didn't want to be in. You're just doing something because you're used to it. And that's the whole PTSD cycle. And you know, four to five months later, it ends. And it ends in the same manner that the, the previous end. And I sit there and I'm like, hmm. And then as our friendship grow, I start learning more about their dating history and their current dating, and it's like, well, this makes sense. This makes sense. But I'm at a point where I'm able to communicate with them and not offend them. I definitely notice those cycles. And with my male friends, you know, a lot of my male friends, they get into relationships and have relationships, but their relationships are based on feeling guilty by not being raised in a relationship. You know, parents, single parents, okay. Most of my friends raised by single parents. Some of my friends raised by dual parents. But as we get older as men, we tend to associate well, I suppose to be in a relationship because it looks right. I suppose to be in a relationship because she wants to be in a relationship. I'm supposed to be in a relationship because, you know, I don't want to grow old. And it's not a, I'm in a relationship because this is what I want. It's because I feel like I'm supposed to do it. So within the whole relationship, their, his foundation is I'm supposed to. And the woman's foundation is... Well, I don't know what happened. I just ended up in this. That's that's a recipe for destruction, you know what I'm saying? That's why it's really critical to like know yourself, love yourself. So your foundation is knowing yourself, love yourself. So when 
you encounter these heartbreaks in a relationship, you're able to take ownership because you're like, well, I love the care for my relationship didn't work out. All right, there is a life. I, I know how to live, you know. Because personally, like, I only struggle with relationships because of my fast-paced lifestyle. You know, I have to be involved with people who fast-paced. I can't be with somebody who wants slowness because I'm learning what slow is. You know, if you ever know me, get to know me, you know I go, 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 pass out, go to sleep, rebuke. Reboot. That's me. Go, 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 reboot. Go, 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 reboot. And then after a while, you know, that software needs to be updated. I update the software. All right, cool. Reset the computer. Updates. All right, cool. We keep it pushing. All right. And then my owner, I have to tell the owner, hey, this is what I, this is who I am. And that's why I tend to have problems. It's when I go through my changes, communicating to people I'm involved with my changes. Because, you know, people change. And that's one thing about me. I'm open to people changing. A lot of times, relationships, people are not open to changing. So I'm definitely, like, focused on, hey, girl, you're going to change at some point. So I'm going to stick around and wait for that change. Because once you change, I know who you're going to be. Because once you get comfortable, you show who you are. You know, you don't jump into a relationship, oh, I'm comfortable. You jump into a relationship trying to get a feel, trying to get a feel. And then you get to that moment where you want to change. And when you change, that's when it's like, okay, that's who I am. Everything starts to make more sense then. So, definitely got to focus on that in life. Definitely critical there. So, when you are in the relationships, and these relationships in really analyze why it's ending. So, when it ends, you don't jump into the next one, fall into the same trap. Because you're responsible. You know what I'm saying? Whatever happened in your relationship, you're responsible for. That doesn't mean feel guilty for something happened. It's just responsibility, you know? You are who you are because of you. You're not who you are because of other people. That's part of the maturing and the maturation process of an individual, male or female. It's okay, I had a messed up life, I had a good life, but now this is my life. I'm taking ownership as I do this, as I do that. That is really critical when you are dealing with yourself. And with the post-traumatic relationships, it's like relationship ended, good or bad. Some end good. But just because relationship any good don't mean you got a good track record of relationships. It's okay, this is new start. This is fresh. Let me let me use these tools I learned. Not these are the tools I'm having. Not okay, this is all I got. This is it. You better like these or not. It's these are the tools I got. Let me present them to you. Let me work on it. Okay. When I change, determine what you're gonna do. That's really important. And you know, we can't rush into relationships. And one way to really notice if, you, if your relationship is genuine and if it's going to work, if you're not comfortable talking about your relationship, that's a red flag. You know, that is definitely a red flag. If you can't communicate with people with your with openness about your relationship, huh, a problem. If you are friends or close to someone every day and they don't know who you dating, that's a red flag. If you are in a parenting relationship and you're not comfortable telling others that you're close to about your relationship, that's a red flag. So it's a lot of red flags that we really have to pay attention to when they arise. Because we have a red flag, and you know what we do? We put our blinders on. And we put our blinders on, it's like, well, if I didn't see it, nobody saw it. Or if they did see it, I don't have to talk about it. 
that's what we are around for. That's what people are around for is to really call us out.